and our friends on Talk Sport and Talk Radio, there's a new sport in town, quite literally, because it's happening within a stone's throw or ball's lob of Talk Sport Towers, and it's called Wall Ball. Back in the 1970s, they tried to flog us Martini with the slogan, any time, any place, anywhere. This new game, Wall Ball's, got a variation on that slogan, a far healthier variation. Any wall, any ball, any time. We've all done it. Slapped a ball against the wall. It's entertained us all for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And the man behind this new sport, and he's very passionate about it, joins us now, Dr. Dan Grant. Good morning, Dan. Thanks for doing this for us. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? Very well, indeed. Now, in the shell of a nut, how does wall ball work? How do we play it? Well, super simple. So, basically, you know, there's a rectangle on the wall and there's a rectangle on the floor. And all you've got to do is hit the ball with your hand, a bit like playing squash without a racket. And it's got to hit that wall and land in the court and you just rally away. You play singles or doubles. And, you know, if it bounces twice or you knock it out, you lose the point. But it's simple to get going because all you need is a ball and a wall. Uh, it's quite difficult to get good at it, but, you know, great to just get going straight away. Now, when I read about this, in, I think it was The Guardian last week, it reminded me of something I've not thought of for decades. When I was at uh, secondary school, when we weren't playing football, we would play a game called Kingy, when we'd lob a ball against the wall and there was a little kind of angled bit, and you'd score that way. How do you score in wall ball? What, what, what are you aiming for to win a match? Well, you are rallying against each other and uh, whoever wins the point wins. And then whoever wins then also carries on serving. And you normally play up to something like 21. But you're dead right when you talk about it at schools. You know, everyone has done this in some form or other, like pat ball, slap ball, pelota handball, whatever you want to call it. And uh, wall ball is now the encompassing term for it, for it all. And coincidentally, I mentioned it's happening within a ball's lob of TalkSport Towers. The first kind of purpose-built wall ball court has opened, hasn't it? Tell us where that is. Yeah, so this is the first community court. So we've done a lot of work in schools over the last few months and uh, the last few years, I should say. Um, but this one is in Marlborough Sports Garden, which is run by the Bankside Open Spaces Trust. It's basically just behind Borough Market. And what's really cool about this is that it's a real kind of urban sport project. So it's got an amazing mural on it. So if you walk past it, you'll see this brilliant mural. And that's, you know, it's community design because we want to kind of be part of the community. Um, and, yeah, you can't miss it. You turn up. There's a vending machine on site. So you get your ball as well. And you've got everything you need to get going. You don't need a coach. You just scan a QR code, watch a video, and you're off. And what kind of ball do you need to play it with? I mean, when we played the game, I think in my school we called it Kingy. When we played that, we just used a tennis ball. What ball do you use for wall ball? Yeah, so the official wall ball is like it's like a American racket ball, so it's quite a bouncy rubber ball. Right. Um, but like you said earlier, our motto, any wall, any ball, that's how you get going. So if you've got a tennis ball, that's fine. And you can always move up to the bouncy ball. Is it anything to do with that kind of public school game? I think it's called Fives which sounds a bit similar. I think Eaton and Harrow play a variation of it. Yeah, so like I said earlier, there's, there's tons of these variations of games. And you were right on the money earlier when you said this has been going on for thousands of years. Um, you know, fives is quite an old English sport, normally based at public schools. You know, the Irish have handball, Spanish have pelota. Um, and the interesting story behind this one was the Gaelic handball, which is normally played on these giant alley courts. Yeah. Uh, when they went over to America, they couldn't build that during the Great Depression. So they built these one-wall courts. Um, and if you go to New York now, you'll see, you know, two and a half thousand one wall courts all across the city. One wall has now turned into a wall ball. And so what we're doing in London, this first one wall court, this first wall ball court, it's almost like we're modelling off um, America. But it's, it's kind of a different target from five. And I know you're really kind of passionate about this, which is a great thing. I love it with enthusiasm. And in fact, if you go along to this court, I'm sure they'll mushroom and spread across the country. There's actually a vending machine where you can buy a ball to play wall ball with. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, we wanted to make it as easy as possible for people to get going. You know, you don't need a coach, you can just turn up. So, you know, the mural on the wall kind of shows you a picture of people playing, so you can kind of see it. You scan a QR code next to it, that shows you an instructional video so you can watch how to play. And yeah, we put a vending machine on side, and it, it's been so popular that it's sold out within two days. Uh, so I need to restock it tomorrow. Brilliant. So how can people find out more, Dan? Where on the internet can they look for details on this sport? And, and also maybe how they can go about contacting you and setting up a wall ball court in their own area of uh, the UK? Well, yeah, and that's what we'd love. We'd love people to set up wall ball. And, it, you know, it starts with just 
simple line marking, tape, chalk, whatever, just get going. Um, you can go to our website, ukwarball.co.uk, and that's got loads of information. It's even got training programs, which are totally free for you. Or just go on Instagram or social media, go to at UK Warball. We'll pick it up and we'll take it from there. See, what I love about this is in the way that um, football is a universal game because you can play football on any surface and you don't need any equipment but a ball. It's the old cliche of jumpers for goalposts. It seems to me, particularly in urban areas, this actually does the same thing. You can play this literally anywhere with a hard surface and a wall. Yeah, I mean, exactly. When I talk to people about this, I'm, I always say, you know, if you want to democratise sport and anyone can get going with no resources, you know, if you've got a field, if you've got green space, play football because like you say just chuck a couple of jumpers down yeah. but if you're you know we're, we're building walls we're losing green space every two weeks or so in london so um you know if you have built up space you have walls and there's no space for football wall ball is the way forward and certainly when we used to play our version of it kingy you could play it against each other or sometimes you just do it to see how long you could rally if that makes sense so there's no reason deep down why this should even necessarily be competitive just keep the ball going like hacky sack or something yeah, for sure. I mean, you can definitely do that. I mean, it, it, interesting as well, you know, the sport goes all the way to the top level. So we say any ball, any wall. And if you just literally play against your garage or your door with your mate, you know, you could be on a path to playing for Team GB. But what I really like is over the last few years, you know, people have innovated it as well. I've been very open with it and saying, you know, there is this uh, regulation version which goes to the top level. But if you want to introduce something else, do that. And, you know, the school kids have introduced their own games. Yeah. And we've even done work with, you know, people who are recovering from a stroke and stroke rehab. And they've been using it as like a tool to get their mobility back, which is uh, really cool. On a, on a more serious level, I mean, this is a fantastic initiative, I think. And it's the kind of game I would want to play. I mean, I, I used to play football fairly regularly. And then I'm knocking on a bit now. And for a while, I played that walking football. But the kind of the thrill isn't quite there with this. This I can imagine play, you can play it on beach holidays, play it anywhere you find anywhere with a wall and a flat surface. Um, on a more serious level, exercise, as we all know, is very important. Exercise is something that many people have been deprived of during the lockdown. So with your kind of doctor's hat on as an NHS doctor, is that part of the drive for this for you, part of the, the push behind the project? Yeah, I think for me, you know, I'm a doctor and I've got a, a real interest in preventative medicine. Now, I want to stop you getting sick in the first place. So you can see where physical activity is really important there. And I think that, you know, something like this, which breaks down the barriers, is, is hugely useful. And from everything I've seen, you know, what you want to do with sport is really break down those barriers just to getting people to just get active. And then if they want to take things further, that's fine. But I think in the UK, we've had this issue where we've almost over professionalized things and it's turned a lot of people off and you've seen this a lot during lockdown as well which has just kind of compounded the issue yeah so just finding ways to get people as active as possible and you know i don't ever push the health message well not the, the I, I push the health message but i don't push the medical message with what we're doing with warble what underlies it all is the theory of you know, preventative medicine and physical activity, you know, that's just there. But we kind of put the game on top of it, which makes it a lot more fun. But ultimately, you know, the more urban sports and, you know, sports which are available to people. So there's like a menu of options to get active. And the message is, you know, it's just fun. You know, you, some people will want to take it seriously, but some people will just want to, like you say, just get on court by themselves or with a yeah. mate and no judgment. And also there's that thing where I suppose you could do it, um, I mean, you know, near us or near our old building, there used to be um, five-a-side courts. You see the lads from our office, other places, women as well, would go out and play five-a-side football at lunchtime. You could do this in any spare 20, 30 minutes, couldn't you? Yeah, and, you know, that comes back to any wall, any ball, literally. You know, you can play against your office or your garage. You can play at home with your kids. You can do whatever you want, you know, just to get going. And, you know, just tag us in it at UK Wall Ball. If you're doing it, you know, even if you're just playing against your door at home with your kids, just tag us in UK Wall Ball. We love to see it because it is just movement and it's great. And, and have you had any uh, tickles from anybody who wants to open one or get involved in other parts of the UK yet? Surely only a matter of time. Yeah, yeah. So it's beginning to come in. So a few few councils are jumping on it um, in London at the moment. And we've had a lot of interest after that article from all around the UK. So my job is to try and facilitate it. But, you know, ideally, I want people to join us in the journey. So you know, I, I'd want someone coming in with a bit of money to say, right, we can definitely fund these courts. And it's all about community and it's all about, you know, social enterprise behind it. So if people are interested in supporting, you know, a, re a really good project with a really amazing social return, 
let's partner up. I mean, the thing about it is, I think this is an idea whose time has absolutely come because for an absolutely minimal outlay compared to, you know, setting up another sporting facility, councils can do their bit to promote health. A sponsor could do their bit to promote health. I mean, it's not going to, I mean, this is, this is almost, I would say, with no disrespect to you and the sport, the cheapest sport I can think of. Yeah, and you know what? That, that's been the best thing and the worst thing because, you know, on the one hand, it's fantastic because you can see the benefit of it and it is really cheap and it is really amazing and that's one of the best things about it. But the other thing is that, you know, I've been doing this for a while. You know, I work as a volunteer, but, you know, I try and get grant funding in to fund people. But whenever you go to investors or people like that, they'll say, hey, where's my financial return? And you say, ah. It's difficult with this because there isn't that much of a financial return. Well, except return, you kind of think, I mean, you know, far be it, I'm sure you thought of all this, but as far as branding goes, on the su- playing surface and on the surface you're hitting, you could have sponsors' logos, could you not? You could have it, they could, well, they, if they're paying for the balls, they could have their logo on the, you know, the pound ago, the wall ball. Yeah, and that's what's coming in. So the balls are all now branded with whoever's supporting it. And we're, you know, the wall, if you walk past this wall, like, you cannot miss it. Uh, down in Southwark, you know, these walls are just amazing billboards. So if you want to get your name on that, if you want your logo, your brand, everything on that, then perfect. So it's UK wall ball. Let me ask a a personal question at the end, Dan. Um, How's it been for you and your colleagues the past year or so? I mean, unprecedented has become almost a cliche when we talk about these times, but you guys are at the kind of coalface on this one. How's it been for you? How's your year and a half been? Well, it's been different, Paul. It's been, um, you know, I think... For me, I've been lucky enough to be surrounded by some really good people. And I think the camaraderie has gone through it, you know. And uh, it's definitely been very challenging at work. And when you see people come out the other side really well, that's good. Um, You know, it's obviously had its... uh, it's nasty effects but now the vaccine's here it feels really good and at the moment i'm doing some work um with the outreach vaccine team from uh, university college london hospital so i'm going to places where you've got homeless people and refugees and kind of seeing a different side of london um but it's really interesting to talk with them and you know they're going to get the vaccine as well and Brilliant. just that kind of health message spreading along Daniel, thank you very much for all the work you do, you and your colleagues, and thank you very much for sharing the story of wall ball with us. You don't need kit to keep fit. It's any wall, any ball, any time. Check it out on UK Wall Ball, and you heard about it right here with me, Paul Ross, on Talk Sports and Talk Radio.